I'm Siamai Korami. Welcome to California Insider. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. We want to talk to you about California. And uh, one thing that we're seeing is the cost of living is skyrocketing in California, especially with housing. Rents are going up. Why is this that California's cost of living is so much higher than the rest of the states? Uh, rest of the states? Well, l- well, let me just say that there are a lot of reasons why, but I was on the board of Lion Homes, which is in Orange County. It's a plain vanilla homes. We, you go out and buy a 10,000 acre tract or a 1,200, you know, big, big tracks. Uh, you'd have to plan the road widenings and do all of that to do these. And if you go through all that, the permits and all the process there, the bureaucracy, uh, on average, it takes about eight or nine years to build a house. Now, obviously, some of them you have earlier, some of them you have later. Uh, so there's a long, long lag there with lots of overhead, lots of bureaucratic cost, which makes the cost of building homes very expensive. It's very high cost. It takes a long, long time, which means you have a lot of capital cost inventory. For example, here in Tennessee, you can probably build a home on a much smaller scale uh, with a delay of maybe a year and a half year, something along that In Texas, the same way. So it's amazingly different on how long it takes and the size of the project there. So that's one, the cost function is very high in California. There's a, another reason why it's extremely high is there, there, there are two areas in California where taxes are protected, uh, that you have low taxes. Number one, Proposition 13 in 1978, limited property taxes to not exceed 1% of the market value of that home. All right, so if you buy a home, it can't, By the way, it also can't rise faster than 2% per year. Now, that proposition is still in place. I was very involved with Prop 13 back in California, which means that the tax base for most homes is way below its market value. So therefore, you're paying probably two-thirds of a percent of the market value or maybe even half a percent of the market value, which makes it a very low tax for the U.S., which is surprising. Uh, for that. Now, they've tried to challenge that a number of times, but have always failed on that. The, the second tax advantage on, on, on homes in California is that unrealized capital gains are not taxed. Now, that's true federally as well. Uh, but in California now, the tax, the capital gains tax, is the same as the income tax. So there's no special tax for capital gains. But if you own a home and it's appreciated in value, you can earn income on the deferred taxes from that home. You can borrow on it. You can do all of this on it. So it makes it a very prime investment hedge for people in California. So everyone who has wealth wants to own a home in California, which has driven up the price. You have very sharp restrictions on where you can build homes and it costs a fortune to build them. And these people all want to hold homes because of the unrealized capital gains tax exemption uh, in California. And uh, it makes them for very, being very, very high priced. They're very attractive to investors. And because of the restrictions on supply, they're very costly to build. And for young people who don't have a lot of wealth, it's a killer. And therefore, the rents are extraordinarily high on these homes because they're very limited supply. So what is going to happen to us in California if we continue at this rate? It seems to become unaffordable, especially for people that have a basic salary or basic income. Well, it is very much unaffordable. Now, let me just say that in 1977, the year before Proposition 13 passed, the median home price in California was a little bit less than the national average, a little bit less. Within 10 years, it was double the national average. So, you know, this Proposition 13 really had a major impact on home. But then the regulations came in. What what the people have been doing uh, in California is they've been moving out uh, to uh, Riverside and all the other counties, the inland counties there. That, that's what's been happening to survive and having these very long commutes. But I don't think this is going to last for much longer because you've got very high tax rates. You've got horrendously uh, uh, intrusive regulations. Uh, you can't do an industry anymore. You can't, you know, all of these things, the smell of the neighborhood, if you have a company, the crowd, all of those things prohibit you from from really building factories. Uh, you've got water restrictions on companies. You've got all sorts of other energy restrictions. I mean, I, I can't begin to tell you so that these 
jobs, the businesses have been driven outside. And, and what you have is people spending very large shares of their income on housing, on rent, rental values. And for nothing, for a one bedroom, 800 square foot apartment would cost a lot of money in California. And especially if you're getting towards the centers of like LA or San Francisco or other areas, and even out in the major suburb areas, it's still very high price. So I would expect to see California start the big decline. Uh, it's already tipped the big tipping point. If you noticed uh, for the first time this year, uh, California will have one less congressional seat than it had historically. It's the first time it's ever lost a congressional seat. If you look at the state migration data this year that just came out a few, like a month ago, uh, the migration data showed California having the largest net out migration of any state in the nation by far. Now, as a percentage, it's less, but it's like it's third largest in a percentage term. I think Illinois is number one, and I think District of Columbia is right in there with Illinois, but California is not far behind. So the, you're seeing a huge out migration of people leaving the state for all the reasons you just named. Uh, and that's that will last for years and years and years to come. Uh, just by way of, ex, uh, of, of comparison, uh, when uh, Romney, George Romney, Mitt Romney's dad, was governor of Michigan, uh, he introduced the income tax, and I think it was in 1971 or 72, uh, they put in a corporate tax within the city confines of Detroit. It was the beginning of the downturn. Uh, Michigan, uh, prior to Romney was uh, probably 5.2% of the U.S. Uh, today, Michigan is a little less than 3.6% of the U.S. I mean, a huge collapse. Uh, Detroit in 1950 had a population of 1.85 million. Today, Detroit's population is under 600,000. Uh, when I was a kid, my mom and dad would take me on trips uh, on, by train to Detroit because it was the Paris of North America. Hard to imagine that today. Uh, the train station in Detroit was like the Taj Mahal. It was unbelievable. The buildings, the structures, it was incredible. Uh, today, it looks like a burned out, bombed out city. It just, you know, Detroit's gone from this huge metropolis down to nothing. The same process has started in California and it started in earnest. And once you start this process, it is very, very hard to reverse it. And that process has started. They've gone over the tipping point and are now coming down. And uh, it will last for decades. Do you think it can become like Detroit, even though we have all these beaches and, and the weather? And do you think it will go that far before it yeah, turns look, around? Well, let me tell you, look at Hawaii. Do they have nice beaches out there? Have you seen the poverty in Hawaii? Have you seen the desperation there? I mean, Hawaii is what California will become. No jobs, no nothing. People on drugs all over the place, beaches all over. I mean, you know, just because it's pretty and just because it has nice beaches and all that stuff, believe me, doesn't keep you from being poor. Uh, 